My name is Micah Hearn. I'm uh, my official title at the PUD library is programming librarian. What uh, what I do in practice is essentially run the library's makerspace called the Creativity Lab, which uh, we um, where we use not only 3D printers but also like a uh, laser cutter, a uh, vinyl cutter, uh, the sewing machines, a recording studio, woodworking equipment, all sorts of different stuff that I help manage and help folks use. Uh, I've got, got a large dif uh, variety of uh, different types of folks or from uh, teens to retirees to professionals, to everything everything in between. Uh, yeah, sometimes people are like, a lot of people coming in like wanting to fix stuff at home but don't know how to tools to use it. Other folks who want to like be like entrepreneurs and most like making product prototypes and uh, things like that. Other folks who just want to make stuff for fun, like artists. Well, over the past month, the library has been closed, so nobody's been able to come in. So uh, in the meantime, I uh, first found out about the possibility of 3D printing uh, protective equipment for healthcare workers and like from my sister, who um, works as a video editor for Harvard Medical's online education link. She uh, told me that uh, hospitals were looking for 3D printed face shields and the like. So um, I asked the director of the library, Kate Merlin, if I could uh, go into the library to uh, use the 3D printers to print out a few of them. But she said, since there's not many opportunities to go in there just for safety purposes, uh, she let me take the 3D printers home. So I've been printing them pretty much ever since then. When we had originally talked over email, you were waiting on approval for if the mask would qualify. Could you explain what that was about? The, the mask design was already approved by the uh, NIH. Basically, there are uh, two sort of logistical hurdles that need to be cleared. One, making sure that a uh, hospital was willing to accept them. Like, yeah, like I reached out to Beverly Hospital concerning, concerning it. They forwarded it to um, Lady Beth Israel, which I believe is their parent company, just to make sure it was okay. Uh, we had it cleared with them so that that their employees would be able to accept it, especially in case I was an asymptomatic carrier. I absolutely understand that. Like, don't want to be like a truck, like infecting a bunch of people from trying, just trying to help. So we're just starting to uh, get them uh, moved out right now. The first people who requested uh, face shields was actually the city's uh, Department of Public Services. So we're going to be getting out a dozen of them to them either today or tomorrow. Way Beth Israel has sent us, uh, given us an address to, to send them to. I heard that um, Atreus Health, I believe it was, is also requesting some, but uh, I still need to uh, reach out to them to, to figure it out. So probably be dividing the rest between them uh, as well as uh, whatever other city departments ask about it. What's the process with you taking the printer home and then getting it all the way to being ready to send out? Well, when you first have an idea for a 3D model, the uh, first thing you need to do is design it in a specific 3D modeling program. I get a lot of questions at the library about whether or not you can print from like a photograph of an object, but unfortunately that doesn't contain enough information to print from. But yeah, there are plenty of dedicated 3D modeling programs out there. The one I usually recommend to uh, beginners at the, at the lab is called um, Tinkercad. It's a web-based one that's the simplest 3D modeling program I've ever used. The, uh, the model in this case though, was already provided by the NIH, so we um, didn't have to, to go through that step or anything like this. It's a cool design too. Uh, the idea is that um, aside from the 3D printed part, which is basically just a visor that goes over the head, the, the thing that hangs down in front that actually shields the face is just like a plastic transparency that's defined as like, that you typically use as like a d divider and a binder, like a three ring binder. Uh, the visor just has like, three little studs on it that you stick the three holes for the, the binder piece onto. Once you have the model, then you uh, run it through a program called a slicer, which is uh, a dedicated program for preparing 3D models for 3D printing, uh, divides it into thin flat slices, um, figures out the fastest way to draw each of those slices as if you were drawing them with a uh, pencil or a pen. So the slicer takes everything it's figured out and puts them into a file that just contains the instructions verbatim, that is how to draw first to the very bottom layer of the object, then just to, um, in the case of our printers, move the plate that it's printing onto down a little bit so we can draw the next layer on top of the first one, down a little bit more, next layer on top of that, so on and so forth, from the bottom of the object all the way up to the top. I don't know if a lot of people know how accessible 3D um, printing equipment is now. Yeah, the price has gone down by a lot. Uh, of, like owning a 3D printer has gone down by a lot in the past uh, five, ten years or so. As well as the ease of use too. It's pretty simple once you once you get the hang of it. So, um, if anybody wanted to contact me uh, directly, they can at uh, ahern at noblenet.org. So that's a h e a r n at noblenet.org. Yeah, even though like the the library is not open, I 
and help face to face or like uh, um, do any like hands on instruction. I'm still willing to, to help with folks who have any questions about 3D printing or uh, making anything to, uh, to help out during the crisis. All right. Awesome. Thanks again, Michael. You're welcome. Thank you.